Ayan, um, clear naman po ba yung audio ko? Yes po. Okay, sige, thank you. Uh, clear naman po. Thank you so much. Well, hello to everyone. Uh, ang didiscuss nga natin today is yung nanotechnology, which is included in our IM Module 5, na posted sa Google Classroom. So let's proceed to the introduction. Introduction to nanotechnology. Next slide. Okay, so nanoscience and nanotechnology respectively are the study and application of extremely small things and can be used across all other science fields such as chemistry, biology, physics, material science, and engineering. So the term nano po came from the Greek term nanos, which, which means dwarf or extremely small. And to continue, let us uh, first differentiate the term nanoscience from nanotechnology. So nanoscience, tulad na nabanggit kanina, is the study of nanomaterials or dwarf materials which can be used nga for nanotechnology. So when we say nanoscience, it refers to the research or the study itself that is being conducted by scientists or engineers. Next slide. Ayan. Meanwhile, yung um, nanotechnology naman, it is the application of the study that is being conducted by the researchers. So therefore, it is the science. Nanotechnology is the engineering itself, and nanotechnology is technology itself. So in other words, nanotechnology employs controlled manipulation sa mga nanomaterials para makapag-create ng mga structures, functional systems with unique capabilities. So basically, nag innovate tayo through nanotechnology. Um, again, to conclude the difference between these two terms na hanggang mamaya ay maririnig natin, nanoscience is studying nanomaterials, again, and nanotechnology is the application or the usage of those materials. Next slide po. Ayan, so since nanotechnology nga and nanoscience are being conducted through nanoscale or extremely small size, it is important for us to know kung gaano ba kaliit yung isang nano. So naka-flash sa screens nyo ngayon yung, isang, yung mga example uh, or mga paghahambing kung gaano ba kaliit ang isang nanoscale. So technically, magbibigay pa ako ng isang... Um, Mas may intindihan, hopefully, natin na example. Uh, sa isang meter, mayroong 1 billion na nanometer. And then, sa isang millimeter, mayroon namang 1 million na nanometer. So, ganon kaliit ang isang nanoscale or isang nanomaterial. Next po. Ayan. So with that information, no, we could really understand sobrang liit ng isang nano. And now na alam na nga natin na sobrang liit niya, next question is paano ba natin siya nakikita or paano ba siya um, nakikita ng mga scientists or engineers at paano siya pinag-aaralan? So ano ba yung mga tools, ano ba yung mga devices na ginagamit ng mga engineers para i-manipulate yung property ng isang material? So... Ironically, to see ultra small scale na mga nanomaterial, we need big machines for that. And example, next slide. An example of microscopy devices. First, we have the STM or the scanning tunneling microscope. So it allows scientists to view three-dimensional images of objects at the atomic level and to manipulate nanoscale materials, small molecules, and atoms. It can be used in air water, ultra-high vacuum, and various other liquid or gas ambients in temperatures ranging from near zero to a few hundred degrees Celsius. So with STM, uh, basically, nag work siya through scanning a very sharp, very sharp metal wire tip over a surface. So pag nilapit mo yung tip ng machine, uh, doon sa sample na nilagay mo, it can feature anything smaller than a nanometer. So mas advanced siya, pinaka-advanced as of now, itong microscope na ito. And the next example po, we have the atomic force microscope. So it obtained information about the nano world by feeling the surface with a mechanical probe. They provide very high resolution images to distinguish a sample based on its mechanical properties, such as hardness or roughness, and can also undertake atomic manipulation. 
So, itong AFNs, uh, ang gamit naman dito is very small pro. Ang, pin ang pinagkaiba niya lang sa, um, dun sa una-una, yung STM, is yung STM nakakapag-scan uh, siya ng mas maliit kesa sa isang nanometer. Meanwhile, itong ATM is hanggang nanometer diameter lang talaga yung kaya niyang scan. So, itong dalawang microscopy devices na to, yung AFM at saka yung STM, it allows the researchers or scientists to create an image of an individual atom or molecule that looks like just a topographic map. Ganun kalinaw yung napoproduce niya na images or photos. So, using these two um, devices, Researchers can also pick up and move atoms. So, pwede rin nilang galaw-galawin yung mga sample na nakalagay doon sa scanning material na yun. So, with the use of these tools, we could, we could observe and manipulate the behavior of the atoms. So, bakit sinabi na we could manipulate the behavior of the atoms? Bakit nagbabago ba yung manipulate ng atoms? Ay, nagbabago ba yung behavior ng isang atom? The answer is yes. Kasi sa mga nanometer scale, pag super liit na ng isang material, uh, nag exhibit na ng unusual property yung isang material na yun, yung nanomaterial na yun. So, basically... Uh, nagkakaroon ng physical and chemical change doon sa matter na yun. So, example, um, meron akong isang lump ng Taliano Gold. And then yung Taliano Gold na yun is yellowy in color or brownish na bright yellow color. And then kapag binasag ko yung, uh, yung Taliano Gold na yun into nano-sized chunks, mag-iiba na yung color niya according to its shape. So, bakit nag-iiba yung color niya kapag maliliit na siya? It is because when you change the size of a particle, it can change the color kasi yung nanometer scale, nagre-reflect siya kung, sa, kung ano yung light na tumatama sa kanya. So, pwede siyang maging orange, pwede siyang maging red, pwede siyang maging purple or green according sa size na na-produce ng nano-size chunk. Ayan, next slide po. And nanomaterials are materials at the nanoscale whose properties change due to their nanoscale dimensions, tulad na nabanggit ko kanina. Ito yung mga broken particles na uh, galing sa isang normal size na material. So uh, again, uh, nanomaterials encompasses all nanoscale materials or materials that contain at least one nanoscale structure, either on their surface or internally. Pwede siya magkaroon ng physical or chemical change. They can be inorganic, organic, or biological. Next slide po. So although modern science, nanoscience, and nanotechnology are quite new, nanoscale materials were used for centuries. Alternate size gold and silver particles created colors in the stained glass windows of medieval churches and hundreds of years ago. The artists back then just didn't know what the process they used to create the beautiful works of art actually led to changes in the composition of the materials they were working with. So, bakit nasabi na uh, noon pa lang may nanomaterials na? It is because we have this so-called natural nanomaterials. So, as the name suggests nga, these are nanomaterials na nag-occur naturally sa world. So, for example, yung volcanic ash, yung smoke, yung molecules sa body. So, noon pa lang talaga meron ng nanomaterials. It's just that hindi pa siya nadidiscover ng mga scientists na pwede pala nating i-manipulate ito at pwede nating i-innovate yung nanomaterials in to something more useful. Next slide po. Ayan. Today's scientists and engineers are even finding a wide variety of ways to deliberately make materials at the nanoscale to take advantage of their enhanced properties such as higher strength, lighter weight, increased control of light spectrum, and greater chemical reactivity than their larger scale counterparts. So with nanotechnology, uh, it is possible to manufacture things na lighter, stronger, and programmable materials na nagre-require ng less energy to produce more useful and conventional materials. So napakaraming possibility na pwedeng um, i-produce na itong nanotechnology which makes it very beautiful. Next topic po. Ayan. These are the ideas and concepts of nanotechnology. So, kailan nga ba nagsimula yung idea and concept behind nanoscience? So, on December 29, 1959, Richard Feynman discussed about the ideas and concepts of nanoscience and nanotechnology. It was long before nanotechnology was used by people. So, as stated by Feynman, individual atoms is 
individual atoms and molecules may be able to manipulate and controlled by the scientists. So, starting 1959, parang nagkaroon na sila ng idea na pwede nga i-manipulate and i-control itong mga nanomaterials. So, eventually, uh, next slide po. And eventually, over a decade later, a professor named Norio Taniguchi originate the term nanotechnology. So again, Norio Taniguchi siya yung nag-originate ng term na nanotechnology. Next slide. So what are the applications of the ideas and concepts of nanotech? Extensive po itong matatakal later ng ibang reporters. But to give you guys an idea, here are some examples. We have everyday materials and processes, electronics and IT applications, medical and healthcare applications, energy applications, environmental remediation, and future transportation benefits. Next one. We have um, notable scientists and engineers behind the advancement of nanotech. First, we have, of course, we have Richard Phillips Feynman. He is an American theoretical physicist who was widely recognized as the most brilliant, influential, and icon iconoclastic figure in his field. He is also known as the father of nanotechnology. So again, she yung like introduced the concept of nanotechnology no on December 1959. Next book. Ayan. So, um, he invented a problem-solving tool called a Feynman diagram. Next slide again. Ayan. Meron din siya mga uh, particular achievements sa development ng modern physics. We have uh, his work in correct, correcting the inaccuracies of earlier formations of quantum electrodynamics. So, kinomplete niya yung reconstruction ng quantum mechanics at ng electrodynamics. At saka, niresolve niya rin yung meaningless, sabi niya, meaningless result ng mga old quantum electrodynamic theory noong 1948. And um, next achievement niya is yung, yun nga, inintroduce niya yung mga diagram tulad ng Feynman diagram. And then, next achievement, uh, nag-provide din siya ng quantum mechanical explanation para sa Soviet physicist na si Lev de Landau sa theory ng superfluidity. So, sabi niya, uh, yung strange frictionless behavior nga daw ng liquid helium at temperatures, at temperatures near absolute zero. Tapos, uh, next, si Feynman din yung nag-provide ng theory na nag-state na which turns on the asymmetrical handedness daw ng particle spin, and then lastly, uh, siya din yung nag-invent ng theory ng partons. Okay, next scientist. Next scientist, we have Norio Taniguchi, yung nag-originate ng term ng nanotechnology. He was awarded with Lifetime Achievement Award by the European, European Society for Precision Engineering and Nanotechnology. So basically, yun yung importance sa kanya. Siya yung nag-originate ng term na nanotechnology. Next is si Kim Eric Drexler. Isa siyang American engineer, best known as the founding father of nanotechnology. So he popularized the potential of molecular nanotechnology. Um, he is also a chairman of the Foresight Institute and nagtatrabaho rin siya bilang research affiliate sa MIT Space Systems Laboratory until 1986. Next, we have, yes, Michael Faraday. So, uh, nagsulat siya ng manual regarding sa practical chemistry na nagre-reveal ng mastery niya nga about technical aspect ng art. Tapos na-discover niya rin yung um, new organic compounds, yung sa benzene, at saka yung sa liquef liquefaction ng permanent gas. Tapos, one of his most well-known creations, the Faraday cage, is the basis of MRI machines or yung machine na ginagamit sa mga medical diagnosis. So, mababanggit din yan later sa mga next reporters. Next, ayan, si Gerd Binig. So, isa siyang German-born physicist who shared with Heinrich Rohrer. So, isa siya sa mga kauna-unang gumawa ng unang STM or yung scanning tunneling microscope. Next. Ayan, along with him is Heinrich Rohrer. Ayan, same lang din sila. Isa sila sa mga gumawa ng unang STM. Next. Ayan. Next, si Don Eigler. Si Donald Eigler, I, um, he was named an IBM Fellow in 1993, which is the highest technical honor in the IBM Corporation.
Ayan, next we have um, Robert Curl, Harold Croto, and then Richard Smalley. In 1985, uh, these three discovered that carbon can also exist in the form of a very stable sphere it's called the buckyball. So, uh, yung buckyballs at yung mga carbon balls na may chemical formula, C60 or C70. So, sinasabi nila na itong carbon balls ay na-form kapag yung graphite is nag-evaporate in an inert at atmosphere. Yun yung Bucky Pops. Next is Sumio Ijima. Sumio Ijima is a Japanese inventor, often cited as the inventor of carbon nanotubes. So, isa siya sa mga um, kauna-una yung kauna-una ang nagbigay ng idea and concept bit behind carbon nanotubes. So, itong carbon nanotubes, kinagamit siya most especially sa pagbuo ng mga uh, nanotechnology, nanotechnological applications. Very important siya sa field ng nanoscience. Next po. Ayan, that would be all. So, proceed na tayo sa everyday materials and processes. Uh, hello, hello. Ayan, so, ang everyday materials and processes po ay yung part ko. So, ang application ng nanotechnology sa everyday materials and processes ay basically to help society and its people yeah, in improving the quality of life. Ang ilan sa mga ang tinatakil na itong nanotech, uh, yung information technology, homeland security, medicine, transportation, energy, food safety, and environmental research. Right. Iba dito, ito ta. Ipapaliwanan ko po sa next slides. Ayan. Objectives and aims Ayun, to modify mga, mga current materials na ginagamit sa construction, sa, ayun nga, sa, but basically lahat ng kahit anong ginagamit na, ayun nga, sa electronics, medicine, sa pagbuo ng mga, ano nga, may construction na ulit, sabi ko. So basically, ang gusto na itong gawin ng nanotech is to improve, improve ang mga materials and make it lighter and uh, stronger, ayun. Next, next slide po. Ayan, electronics and IT applications. Uh, dito naman sa electronics and IT applications, ang pinaka ang pinaka magandang example po dito na nagawa ng uh, nanotech ay yung mga memory cards, which is alam natin na back then sobrang lalaki ng machines. Tapos ang nai-store lang niya na memory ay nasa kakarampot lang. Kilobytes, megabytes, ganun. And compared to today na napakaliit lang na memory card pero kaya na mag-store ng gigabytes and terabytes of memory. Uh, next naman na yung medical and healthcare applications. Uh, ito, very useful sa, ano, sa mga tao. Ang, ang, ang nabigay ng nanotech ay ang, alam na natin, yung mga MRI scan, ganun. So basically, yung mga mga machine for surgery, ganun, and pag-diagnose ng mga sakit ng mga tao. At ang iba pa, yung mga, yung mga gamot na prescribe at binibigay sa mga tao may sakit. Next slide po. Uh, energy applications. Uh, it's uh, used to improve uh, in alternative energy, energy sources and ay nga pala kasi pa yung uh, conventional energy energy sources natin to parang para lang mas makuha pa tayo ng energy na magagamit at uh, bibigay sa ano sa mga sa masa In environmental remediation yung remediation from uh, remedy uh, ang pinaka ano dito ay yung water treatment kasi alam naman natin na hindi lahat ng hindi naman lahat ng ng lugar kung may malinis na tubig at naiinomag. So, ang gustong gawin ng ano, nanotech ay inga to address and uh, fix it, give solution to the problem na uh, um, mas ma-filter ng maayos yung tubig para maging safe and drinkable at mas maibigay sa ano sa mga tao. Uh, next slide po. Uh, future transportation benefits. So ayun, nanotech aims to creation aims aims for the creation of multifunctional materials. As I said kanina, ayun nga, 
to make it lighter and stronger. Uh, also to para din yung mga yung mga materials na yun ay magamit to create uh, transportation vehicles and to possibly make it safer for ano for the people. Ayun po. Uh, next naman po is yung benefits of having nanotech in today's society. Next slide po. And so there are various benefits po ng nanotech in today's society. Iba nabanggit na briefly ng other reporters or ng ng reporters. And alam ko mas maratakal pa to sa susunod pang parts ng topic. But I will just mention a few na benefits ng nanotech in today's society. So, unay na natin yung benefit ni nanotech sa agriculture and the food industry. So, the use of nanotechnology can potentially elongate the life of fruits and vegetables. So, this is an important one because there's, if I'm not mistaken, na patuloy na may increase yung a problem with food waste. One of the reasons for these or this or one of the reasons for this is yung Mabil yung problem nga na mabilis masira or mabilis papanis yung isang pagkain. So with the use of nanotechnology, mas papapatagal niya ngayong buhay ng pagkain by using nanoparticles of silver into foods na mag act naman as uh, antibacterial agent. So next naman po, uh, nakatulong din po yung biosensors related to nanotechnology. May effective roles din po siya sa pest control. Ito na po papasok yung uh, benefit ni nanotech kay agriculture and also may effect din po yung biosensors ni nanotech kay food products na nai-produce ng agriculture sector. So even the Food and Drug Administration has recently seen the benefits the benefits of this nanotechnology na dati hindi naman po nila pinapansin. No? Uh, they began to have consensus with nanotechnology manufacturers and uh, pinipilit, hindi eh, mo pinipilit, uh, parang kinakausap po nila kung paano ba mas mapoproduce massively itong nanotechnology kung ano pa yung other possible benefits nito sa iba pang industry. So, this partnership between FDA and nanotechnology could include a wide range of products. No? Parang sa, hindi lang sa food, but also could include uh, products with medical services, uh, other foodstuffs, and also cosmetics. Uh, with the help of FDA nga po. And next po. Oh no, ito na naman, nerd nanotech in the energy sector. Uh, the development of more effective energy producing, energy absorbing, and energy storage products in smaller and more efficient devices is possible with this nanotech. So gamitin ito yung example ni, uh, ni Angelo kanina, no? Dati nga, yung memory cards is sobrang lalaki and if I'm not mistaken, kilobytes lang yung kaya nilang i-carry, but ngayon, with the help of, hindi naman with the help, pero ngayon has the society uh, continues to evolve. No? Yung isang malit na memory card ay kaya na mag-store ng more or less terabytes na ng information. Ayan po. Then nanotechnology can also enable more efficient transportation. So by uh, the use of catalysts and fuels, uh, with also the use of lighter and stronger materials, kung saan with the use of this Lighter and stronger materials, nga, no, mas nalilessen yung paggamit ng fuel. Since kapag mas mabigat po kasi yung material na ginamit sa sasakyan, mas nangangailangan ng power para mapaandar yung sasakyan. With the use of more power, which comes with the use of more fuel po. So nakakatulong si Nanotech with that part. And also, it can, it can help with creating efficient batteries by using lithium ion, if I'm not mistaken po. Then, another another benefit po is yung diesel fuel additives na invented by uh, Oxinoca, uh, named as the Envirox fuel borne catalyst. So, yung ginagawa naman po neto, ay uh, na-improve nyo yung diesel fuel, diesel fuel combustion na relevant siya ngayon, especially kasi ang taas na ng fuel prices. And also, uh, but also scarcity or may kakulangan din sa fuel kaya nga po nagtaas yung prices. So with the use of this uh, additives, mas nakakatulong din po siya in terms of uh, and reducing fuel consumption, just like I said, and also nakakatulong din po siya sa environment by also helping on lessening the harmful exhaust emissions. So, ang ginagamit po ng additive na to ay gumagamit sila ng nanoscale particles of cerium oxide to catalyze the combustion reactions between diesel 
fuel and air. Next slide po. Ayan. So, nabanggit na natin kanina, more energy efficient transportation resulting from the use of high strength, low weight materials. Ayan. Nanotechnology is being used in lithium ion and other batteries that are expected to increase the efficiencies or a hybrid and electric vehicles. So, with, uh, recently po, nagkakaroon na rin ng pagtaas ng bilang ng electric vehicles. Sinimulan ng Tesla, if I'm not mistaken. Well, they massively manufactured electric vehicles and sumunod na lang sila Porsche and Audi and other ma car manufacturers po. So with the help of Nanotech, makagawa po or possible po na makagawa pa sila ng smaller batteries, lighter batteries na makapag-produce pa po ng much energy efficient na energy or na power. Then next, more efficient electricity transmissions may enable the generation of increased amounts of electricity and remote location. So nakatulong din daw po si Nanotech with the creation of a much more efficient transmission lines na with this help po nakatulong po siya na to make possible marating pa po yung places na hindi pa po nararating ng normal transmission lines. Next po. Ayan, so other benefits of using Nanotech. So marami siyang benefit pero di na natin sila ibabanggitin lahat. Then Next is yung nanoparticles of silver uh, ay nagagamit po sa an as antimicrobial properties in hand washes, bandages, socks and zinc or titanium. Another one is yung use ni nanoparticles as an active UV protection elements in modern sunscreens. If ginamit siya sa textiles, nanoparticles of silica can help to create fabrics that repel water and other liquids and also la or lastly, Nanoelectronics holds some answers on expanding the capabilities of electronic devices that can be expanded while reducing their weight and power consumption. So most likely po yung prominent na nababanggit na benefit nito ni Nanotech is producing materials that are more efficient, has a lighter weight, and mas napag-store po na energy in a more efficient way. Thank you. Next. Uh, next naman po is examples of nanomaterials and other nanostructured goods. Uh, marami po siya, pero include ko lang po sa PPT is anim. Una na po dito, which is yung prominent or alam naman natin lahat, is silver. So silver is used in medicine as an antiseptic in wood management. It can be also used in consumer products such as food packaging materials, food supplements, textiles, and electronics. Next po. Uh, next naman is carbon-based nanomaterials. So, carbon-based nanomaterials is an extremely light and versatile material that depending on the local bonding of the constituting carbon atoms has usually varying properties. So, these materials can also be used in electrical conductivity, heat transmission capacity, and also for the media and other electrical energy storage. Next po. So, nanotitanium oxide... And nanotitanium oxide are particles of titanium oxide, also called as titania. Uh, this is a white opaque naturally occurring mineral existing in a number of crystalline forms, the most important of which, which are rutile and anatids. Ang most important function nito ay pagka powder form niya po ay magagamit as pigment for lending whiteness and uh, opacity. So nakakatulong din siya sa self-cleaning surface and textiles, UV-resistant coatings and paints, disinfectant sprays, sunscreens, water treatment agents, and anti-cancer treatments. Next po. So nanoceramics, nanoceramics include simple metal oxides such as alumina, iron oxide, zinc oxide, and cerias. Alumina ay for propellants, particularly in the space industry, Iron oxide, magnetic storage technology, zinc oxide, sunscreen, and so on. Next po. So nanoscale additive. Uh, it is a nanoscale, a nan nanoscale additive material or nanotechnology involves the development or use of materials that have at least one dimension that is, at l that is less than 100 nanometer as defined by the nan National Nanotechnology Initiative. So na-provide ni nanoscale additive Ang isang lightweight ballistic energy deflection in personal body armor or can help uh, resist the wrinkling, staining, and bacterial growth dun po sa armor na yun. So itong si nanoscale additive can also 
be used as an additive in polymer composite materials and also more on body armor po yung effect or yung benefit nito ni nanoscale additive next naman po uh, last na po ata to if i'm not mistaken nano engineered engineered materials these are materials that are chemical or these are chemical substances or materials that are engineered with particle sizes between 1 to 100 nanometers in at least one dimension can make superior household products such as degreasers, stain removers, sealing products, uh, self-cleaning house paints, and na po ng dirts and marks. Next po. Yes. Thank you. Bali sa may electronics and IT application naman. Pa next po. Um, katulad ng sinabi kanina, yung nanotechnology ay ginagamit siya in every branch of science, including chemistry, physics, biology, materials, science, and engineering. And yung nanotechnology revolution nga, it aided in the creation of environment for collaborative work between chemists and other specialists, eventually leading to collaboration with materials and industrial science, allowing scientists and specialists in all fields to advance their science quickly. And yung example nga nito, yung mga nanochemists, kung saan, um, ay yung nanochemistry pala, ay um, uh, parang bagong field siya ng chemistry, kung saan, ina-emphasize dito yung study and development of preparation methods of useful materials with nanometer size and dimension. And now they are employed in, ay yung mga nanochemists nga ay employed na ngayon sa, uh, in fields such as medical organic chemistry, polymer chemistry, product synthesis, and others. Kung saan dito, gin, um, ginagamit nila yung variety of methods through, um, to, um, to prepare and create nanomaterials with electronic, magnetic, photochemical, and chemical properties. And their mechanical system is interpretable and explainable at the nanoscale. Pa next po. A major contribution of nanotechnology in today's society. Many benefits of nanotechnology depend on the fact that it is possible to tailor the structures of materials at, ex at extremely small scales to achieve specific properties, thus greatly extending the material science toolkit. And katulad na, ay panex po, katulad na ng sinabi ni, Patal, ni Vitalbero, no, yung um, using nanotechnology, materials can effectively be made stronger, lighter, more durable, more reactive, more sieve-like, or better electrical conductor, among many other traits. Pa next. Um, importantly, there are uses of nanotechnology in electronics and electrical goods that do give rise directly to environmental and human health concern. And this is the use of synthetically produced nanoparticles and nanomaterials to make electronic components or surface coating for electrical goods. And nanomaterials are commonly um, defined, uh, defined katod ng kalina sinasabi nila Angel, na as material design and produced to have structural features with at least one dimension of 100 nanometer or less. And sa electronics, yung number nga ng different nanomaterials are being used commercially or uh, uh, um, um, being used commercially for research and development purposes. And yung some of the most common use nanomaterials nga for electronic and electrical equipment ay yung nano, nano, ay carbon nanotubes and quantum dots. And sa case naman ng surface coating, yung nanoparticle of silver. Pa next po. Uh, and, um, overall, yung nano, um, nano, Nanotechnology um, ay nakakatunong siya sa atin to understand life. With the discovery of molecular, molecular by, um, technology and expanding studies on the life, we may better understand mankind and ourselves with the use of nanotechnology. Furthermore, katulad nga na sinabi kanina, no, yung nanomedics ay nagiging prevalent na, ay nagiging prevalent na ngayon. Also, help, um, nanotechnology help us to understand, recognize, and the use of Mo, uh, and the use of the use the most I uh, use the most of our materials and sources because of their nanostructures our most advanced technology enable us to build materials with exceptional capabilities in optics magnetism mechanics and electronics also um uh, understanding and processing information the evolution of information system is accelerating whether through the press radio telephones Terrestrial channels.
or the internet, now we can store big information and speed of information retrieval from databases. We can also unearth or better grasp the past of our history with the use of nanotechnology. We can acquire and analyze data or artifacts using advanced technology to understand their components or what the objects are composed of. And we can date them back. Pali yung example dito no, na binibigay ng nanotechnology um, in electronics, yung mga magnetic nanoparticles para sa pag store ng data, printable and flexible electronics, and advanced display technologies, technologies with quantum computing and conductive nanomaterials. Also, um, yung nanotechnology in electronics can improve display screens on electronic devices and revolutionize a variety of electronic products, application, and procedure by reducing their weight power consumption and transistor size in integrated circuit. And lastly, yung nanotechnology ay nagpo-produce ng mat um, maraming materials and electronic devices with a wide range of application, including the ability to produce computer chips and sensors that are significantly smaller, more energy efficient, faster, and cheaper than their current counterpart counterparts. Next po. Hello po. Uh, lastly, uh, we'll discuss po yung examples of electronic products with nanostructures. Uh, next po. Yung unang example po yung solar panels using a gradual cell which uses a layer of material coated with highly porous titanium dioxide nanoparticles at its new surface materials rather than silicon is less expensive to produce and allow cells to collect sunlight over a larger surface area. Uh, ang, Robinson, ang Robinson Star Mills po si, uh, sa San Fernando, Pampanga ay meron po siyang solar panels na nagko-consist po ng 10,880 uh, solar panels at Binubuo po siya ng 1.75 hectares at uh, pupuno siya ng hectares sa uh, kanyang rooftop. Kung uh, ang mga nagpamanufactured po sa Pilipinas ay next po. Ay ang solar panels, uh, BT, uh, BTW light sa, sa China at so, uh, yung solar rooftop. Ang lowest price po ay 90,000 sa isang residential at ang pinaka-expensive po nila ay 365,000. Next po. Uh, nanobots, a tiny electric machine using medicine to perform a specific task or task repeatedly at nanoscale dimensions. There are nano devices designed to keep the human body healthy and safe from pathogen, pathogens. It will provide a novel approach to medical applications such as surgical instrumentation, diagnosis, and drug delivery. Makakatulong uh, yan no, about sa isang drugs na itarget yung, yung precise na location nito para matulong, uh, maging effective siya at mabawasan yung possible side effects. Next, next po. Yung magnetic random access, access memory, ang kanyang feature po ay mas mabilis yung boot ng kanyang laptop or yung computer. At uh, kapag nag-shutdown po yung, accidentally po nag-shutdown yung device niyo po, yung laptop or yung computer, pwede, uh, pwede po siyang mag-boot, uh, mag-resume play features po siya. Uh, kaso po, dun, dito sa MRAM or sa MRAM po ay hindi pa po siya kinda mainstream. Ang uh, counterpart po nito ay yung DRAM or yung dynamic random access memory, yung nakikita po natin sa laptop or sa computer. Ang pinagkaiba lang po ng MRAM ay magnetic po ito, yung nagpo-provide na ng ano po, ng storing data, yung dynamic po ay ele uh, electronics, electrical energy po. Ang example po nito sa kasulukuyan na ginagamit ay aerospace, defense, automotive, robotics, consumer electronics, and medical devices. Uh, pero po, uh, ang MRAM ay pwedeng palitan po ng DRAM kung magkakaroon po pa ng possible sa, sa market po. Yun po. Uh, last, uh, next po, yung transistor po, uh, ito po yung isang, uh, isa po siyang maliit na chip na nag-store po ng, uh, nag-store po siya ng electric dun po sa isang publika. Ang uh, si isang Intel po na processor ay nag, uh, binubuo po ng around 5 billion. Sa isang MRAM po ay 6 transistor naman po. Next po. Yung last po na example namin is yung nano IPS computer monitors. Uh, isa po ito quantum dust produce more vibrant colors while being more energy efficient. Uh, mas 
kilala siya sa mga esports FPS games kagaya ng Valorant or CSGO dahil kaya niyang maglabas ng vibrant color at uh, para madali yung makita yung mga kalaban. Yun po yung uh, kaya sa pwede rin po sa bahay uh, by experience niyo po yung um, yung para live screening ng isang cinema po dahil sa sa use sa tulong po ng nanotechnology. Yun lamang po. Salamat. Okay, so tapos na po ano ang discussion ng group 1 from 33, ano? Ah, uh, sige mamaya na ako magbibigay ng ano ng ilang comment and ano, question siguro, no. So, and from ano din, from the class day, kung meron din pong mga uh, question or gustong i-clarify from the report of uh, uh, group 1 from 3T and also later for uh, coming from 3T uh, naman. Sige po. So, ang mga ano, representative ng ano, ng 3T, um, madami pala, kala ko si Fital Vero, so sa Pedra lang. So, Sino yung mga nagsalita? Bas o yung huli, uh, Abuan, at saka si La Rosa. May absent po ba sa inyo, uh, Group 1? From 3-3? May absent po ba? Sa members nyo? Uh, check lang po namin. Okay, sige po. So, maya na lang. Okay, continuation po muna tayo ng discussion on nanotech. 3-2 Marinela Naririnig po ba yung audio ko? Yes po Ayan, thank you. <laughs> What's my question? So, Adi ka, Nano na ka, familiar naman po siguro tayo kung nakapag sinabing Nano, ito ay nanganghulugang mali. Therefore, when we say nanotechnology, it refers to the usage of small particles for industrial processes. Next, please. Next, please. And next, Papo. Next, Papo. Ayan. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat mula sa pangkat ng BA History 3-2. Sa palagay ko ay nakikilala pa naman ang lahat ang cute na nilalang na nasa inyong mga screens. Para sa mga hindi po nakakakilala, ito ay si Baymax ng Big Hero 6. Next, po. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. I was alerted to the need for medical attention when you said, Ow. Next po. Ayan, si Baymax ay isang robot na dinisenyo partikular na upang mga laga sa kulusugan ng mga tao. Katulad ni Baymax, bunga ng teknolohiya, sa tunay na buhay ay may mga invention din na dinisenyo para sa aplikasyong medikal at pangkalusugan. Next, please. Next, please. Ayan, sa tulong po ng nanotechnology, maagang nasusuri ang mga sakit kung kaya't maaga rin itong nalulunasan. Mayroon po tayong tinatawag na gold nanoparticles na siyang ginagamit upang madetect ang mga tumor at mga toxic gases. Ito rin po ay ginagamit bilang gene therapies. Sa ngayon ay masusi pa rin po itong pinag-aaralan bilang potensyal na lunas sa cancer at sa iba pang uri ng mga sakit. Next po. Ayan, sa tulong ng nanotechnology, maagang nasusuri ang mga sakit kung kaya't maaga rin po itong nalulunasan o napipigilan. Paano? Ito ay dahil ang bawat uri ng cell ay may kakaibang properties. Dahil dito, ginagamit ang nanotechnology upang ma-recognize ang cells of interest. Sa madaling salita, natutukoy ang mga cells na may damage o potensyal na magdulot ng malalang sakit. Next please. 
patuloy ding pinag-aaralan ang nanotechnology bilang diagnosis at lunas sa atherosclerosis o yung pamumuo ng plaque sa arteries. Ito ay ang pinak atake sa puso at stroke na kilala bilang nangungunang sanhi ng kamatayan sa buong mundo. Gumawa ang mga mananalipsik ng isang nanoparticle na, na siyang gagaya sa good cholesterol ng ating katawan na tinatawag na HDL or High Density Light Routing na siyang makatutulong upang palubugin ang plaque, ang plaque or yung pamumuo. Sa tulong ng nanotechnology, maaaring wakasin ang pangangailangan ng critical na operasyon sa mga kahalintulad na sakit. Next, please. Next, please. Sinasabi rin po na ang disenyo at pag-aagawa ng isang solid-state nanopore materials ay kaya magresulta sa development ng novel gene at ng single molecule detection sa murang halaga at high speed with minimal sample preparation and instrumentation. Ibig sabihin, mas mura kumpara sa mga um, diagnosis po natin sa ngayon. Next, please. At ito nga po, gaya ng nasabi kanina, patuloy pa rin pinag-aaralan ng nanotech bilang lunas sa cancer. Ibig sabihin, may potensyal ito na baguhin ng mundo ng medikal. Ang pamamaraan ng mga doktor sa paggamot ng cancer at maaaring mabawasan ang toxic effects dulot ng chemotherapy. Next, please. Next, please. In the future, tulad ng mga starfish, maaaring kayanin na rin ng mga tao na mag-regenerate sa tulong ng nanotech. For instance, novel materials can be engineered to mimic the crystal mineral structure of human barn or use as a restorative resist for dental applications. Hindi imposible sapagkat kung nababalitaan po ninyo nito lamang January 2022 na itala sa kasaysayan ng matagumpay na genetically modified pig heart transplant sa tao. Imagine mo yung puso ng baboy, kakayanin sa puso ng tao. Ayan po. Next, please. Next, please. Ayan, bilang panghuli, ginagamit din ang nanoparticles sa mga bakuna, kasama rito ang mga tinanggap natin sa COVID-19 vaccines. Bilang halimbawa, ang Pfizer at Moderna ay nagtataglay ng tinatawag na lipid nanoparticles na siyang nagpoprotekta at naghahatid sa mRNA patungo sa tamang lugar ng ating cells. Isa lamang ang ibig sabihin nito. Ang paggamit ng nanotechnology ay siyang magpapaikli sa dapat sana ay mahaba pang pag-aaral sa paggawa ng mga bakuna. Thank you. Next na siya. Magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Ako nga pala ang susunod ng mga report. Um, next slide please, next slide. Energy applications. Nanotechnology is finding application in traditional energy sources and greatly enhancing alternative energy approaches to help meet the world's increasing demands. Siyempre kailangan natin ng energy para makapag-function tayo eh. So next slide please. So ayun, uh, number one, nanotech is improving the efficiency of fuel production from raw petroleum materials through better catalysis. Tapos ang isa pa naman ay researchers are developing wires that contain carbon nanotubes that will lower the resistance that high tension wires which are currently being used in the electric grid improving transmission and reducing power loss syempre kailangan natin ito para mabuhasan ng brown out so yun, uh, next slide please simulod naman ay nanotechnology can be incorporated into solar panels, panels to convert sunlight to electricity more efficiently. Siyempre, ang natutulong ito sa ano sa pagkuha ng sunlight ay yung size ng size ng mga ions na yon. Ito nagbibigay ng ano ng passage para mas makakuha pa ng sunlight ang solar panels upang mas marami pa makuhang energy ito. So, ang next ay nanotechnology can 
already being used to develop many new kinds of batteries that are quicker charging. But nga ba mabilis ito? So dahil sa chain-like architecture ng, mga, ng nanotechnology na ginamit sa mga cellphone, ang lithium ions at electrons ay makagalaw ng mas mabilis upang magkaroon ng mas mabilis na pag-charge ng ating mga cellphone. So ang last ay, an epoxy containing carbon nanotubes is being used to make windmill blades that are longer, stronger, and lighter weight than other blades. Siyempre, pag mas, pag mas magaan ang iyong gamit, tulad, for example, is, ano, biker ka, kailangan mas magaan ang ginagamit mo mga, ano, mga, Dito. For example, is bumili ka ng mga cargo na ano, ng mga pag -up, na pang-upgrade sa yung bike. Syempre, mas bibilis ang iyong takbo kung mas magaan ang gagamitin mong mga ano, mga pang-upgrade sa bike. So, next slide please. In the area of energy harvesting, researchers are developing thin, thin film solar electric panels that can be fitted on computer cases and flexible piezoelectric nanowires woven into clothing to generate usable energy on the go. Nanotechnology enables more efficient lighting systems such as light, lighter and stronger vehicles, chassis materials for the transportation sector, and lower energy consumption in advanced electronics. So, next slide po. Um... Ito oh. naman po ang ipapresent ng, ng kasama ko pa po. Uh, let's proceed to environmental nanotechnology. Next. So nanotechnology is being used in several applications to improve the environment. Uh, kasama dito yung cleaning up existing pollution, improving manufacturing methods para ma-reduce yung pollution uh, pollution natin and making alternative energy sources mas maging cost effective. Uh, nanotechnological products, processes and application are expected to contribute significantly to environmental and climate protection dahil nga it saves raw materials, energy at, and water as well as reducing greenhouse gases and hazardous, hazardous wastes. Next. Uh, so next so why why nanotechnology uh, so nanomaterials exhibit surprising characteristics with their high surface to volume ratio that bestows uh, spe special physiochemical properties including uh, diverse function and improve that improve uh, fun function and reactivity or selectivity so yung mga distinctive properties nito can be applied to ma many goods ka kagaya ng sinabi nung last group and yung mga kasama ko uh, that could support environmental and climate protection next so yan ito na yung mga benefits mag na tayo so generating less pollution during the manufacture of materials isang example dito yung kung paano yung mga researchers uh, researcher dinemonstrate nila kung paano yung mga silver nanoclusters uh, bilang catalyst para yung uh, byproducts is ma-reduce sa pagmamanufacture ng propylene oxide. Yung propylene oxide is yung uh, common materials, common material na ginagamit sa plastic, sa pintura, sa mga detergents, ganyan. Uh, Ito rin ay can pro uh, producing solar cells that generate electricity at uh, competitive cost. Kagaya nung sinabi tungkol sa energy, um, uh, may mga pag-aaral tungkol sa na, na, na mga nanomaterials na talagang nakapag-improve siya ng result sa paggawa ng, ay pag uh, bring out ng energy at pag store ng energy. Mas cost, effect, cost effective kesa sa mga counterparts nito. Next. So yan ay yung picture uh, para sa uh, trap, pag-trap ng sunlight sa mga solar panels, sa solar cells, using nanowires. Next. So, cleaning up oil spills. Using uh, photocatalytic copper tungsten oxide, yung mga nanopartic, uh, na nanoparticles, it will break down oils into biodegrade double compounds. Uh, kagaya nung uh, uh, ano to? 
due to uh, dahil nga may high surface yung nanoparticles uh, yung reaction nito for clean up oil spills is good tapos dagdag pa dito yung uh, nano par- nano, mga nano materials could help uh, work with the solutions to radioactive waste clean up next so yan konting illustration lang tungkol doon sa oil spills kung paano nangyayari. Next. Clearing volatile organic compound or VOCs from air. Next. Uh, reducing the cost of fuel cells. So changing the spacing of platinum atoms using fuel cells increase the catalytic ability of the platinum. Uh, inaalaw nito yung flu- fuel cell to function with about 80% less platinum. Ibig sabihin, mas magiging low uh, uh, nare-reduce yung cost ng fuel cells. Next is storing hydrogen for fuel cell powered cars. So sa transpo, malaki rin ang matutulong niya. Using graphene layers to increase the binding energy of hydrogen to the graphene surface of a fuel tank results to a higher amount of hydrogen storage and a lighter weight fuel tank. So mas mapapabilis yung mga uh, sasakyan na naproproduce ng merkado. Next. So isa sa mga pinakamalaking bagay na natutulong ng nanotechnology ngayon is yung sa tubig. So uh, concern yung nanotechnology sa pagtulong sa uh, sa water application natin with treatment and remediation, sensing and detection, at uh, pollution prevention. Next. So sa treatment and remediation, A new generation of nanomembranes for separation might be produced using nanotechnology para ma-improve yung purification, desalination, at yung overall method ng pagtanggal ng mga dumidumi sa, uh, sa tubig natin. Tapos next, sensing and detection. Dahil nga maliliit yung, uh, nanotec- uh, yung, nan- yung mga nanomaterials, Uh, mas improve yung sensors na makaka- maka-identify ng mga hazardous, yung mga chemical, biological pollution sa ating mga tubig. Next. Then, uh, pollution prevention uh, covers both aquatic infectious illnesses and conventional contaminants. For instance, yung mga titanium dioxide catalyst na alternative sa mga chlorine-free biocides Uh, me, uh, is made possible by na- nanotechnology itself. Next. So yon paalala lang na kahit pa maganda yung nanotechnology, which we should create delicate balance para sa paggamit ito. Kasi to combine the demands of the environment with the activity, selectivity, and stability of the nanotechnology, city, yun nga, we must be cautious. Next. So yan, conclusion, it, it, uh, sa, para sa environment, nanotechnology could, could, could improve water quality, air quality, uh, tapos it can cut greenhouse gas emissions, yung pollution, mababawasan. Pero kailangan natin maging careful sa paggamit ng nanotechnology, kailangan pag-aralan pa continuously dahil uh, may toxicity pa rin naman ito. Pwede pa rin mag-produce ng mga hazardous compounds kung hindi gamitin ng maayos. Next reporter, salamat. Okay, so good evening. My name is Angeline Tinadat and I'm going to report about future transportation benefits. So, next please. So, ang i-discuss natin is about sa application of nanotechnology in the following, sa automobiles, aerospace, marine transportation, and infrastructure. Next, please. So, doon muna tayo sa application of nanotechnology in automobiles. So, yung automobiles kasi meron siyang limang parts. Um, una, body parts, may engines, tires, mirrors and glasses, at saka yung interior nito. So, doon muna tayo sa body parts. Sa paint coatings kasi, um, kapag yung automotive bodies ay kinoat natin sila with nanoparticles, ang mangyayari sa kanya is magiging scratch resistant siya and durable. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, um, maglalast siya for a long period of time. And um, obviously, magkakaroon din siya ng enhanced appearance 
and lastly, protected in extreme weather conditions. So, mahalaga ito dahil ang mga sasakyan natin is exposed lagi sa sa sunlight, sa extreme sunlight, sa rain, or kung sa ibang bansa, sa mga snow. So, kapag um, kinote natin yung mga automotive bodies ng nanoparticles, ang mangyayari is protected siya kahit gaano pa ka-extreme yung weather. Next naman is lightweight and body parts. Magkakaroon siya ng higher strength and lighter. Actually, ito yung pinaka-common denominator sa application of nanotechnology in vehicles. Kasi sinasabi na kapag higher strength, mas matibay pero at the same time, magaan lang. Kasi um, yung, yung pinaka-weight ng vehicle is directly correlated siya sa magiging final cost ng sasakyan. So, ibig sabihin, kapag mas magaan, mas mura yung magiging final cost ng sasakyan. And at the same time, mas, ano, malalesan yung fuel consumption kapag mas magaan yung, yung, yung sasakyan. Next naman is yung engine. Ang sabi dito is, less friction of cylinder walls is equals to less fuel consumption. So, to explain lang, yung, Engines kasi kapag kinote mo siya ng aluminum nanomaterials, magkakaroon siya ng less friction of cylinder walls. Kasi yung mga modern automobiles, 10 to 15% sa fuel energy nila is consumed by friction of moving mechanical parts. Eh ang pinaka main mechanical part is yung piston and yung cylinder walls. So ibig sabihin kapag um, nakote mo na siya ng aluminum nanomaterials, magiging less friction yung mangyayari sa cylinder wall. So, malalesan din yung fuel consumption. Next, please. So, next na part naman ng automobile is yung tire. Um, yung tire kasi, um, it is made up of many materials with many elements, katulad ng rubber, steel, threads, fillers, and etc. Um, ang pinaka main na component nito, obviously, is yung rubber. So, by adding nanoparticles sa rubber composites, magiging durable siya and safe. Kasi, um, what makes a good tire ba? Diba, dapat low rolling friction and good grip. So, ibig sabihin, dapat, um, hindi siya basta-basta gumugulong kasi kung hindi, hindi magiging safe yung driver and yung passengers. So, ang mangyayari, kapag hinaluan mo ng nanoparticles yung natural rubber, magkakaroon siya ng better rolling resistance and reduced inner friction. So, ang mangyayari, mas magiging safe yung mga passengers. Next naman is yung mirrors and glasses. Makikita natin dito yung picture, yung letter A at saka yung letter B. So, to explain lang, yung mga mirrors kasi and yung headlights ng sasakyan, made of glass siya. So, dahil dito, um, maaaring mag-cause ito ng... Um, discomfort sa mga passengers and sa drivers kasi usually kapag umaga di ba, tirik yung araw edi eh magiging uncomfortable yun para sa, sa driver. Kapag gabi naman um, kapag gabi naman ma-tense yung um, glare ng ilaw galing sa kabilang sasakyan. So ang mangyayari is kapag nag-apply tayo ng aluminum oxide nanoparticles sa surface ng mirrors and ng headlights um, mas magiging maliit na lang yung quantity of light na mare-reflect sa salamin. So, hindi na as intense yung glare. So, makikita natin sa picture, letter A, um, yun yung walang, walang nanoparticle. So, intense yung glare ng ano, ng ilaw. Sa letter B naman, yun yung with nanoparticle. So, less intense siya. Pero at the same time, kita mo pa rin yung ilaw ng headlight. So, safety rin talaga. And letter E, doon naman tayo sa interior. Kasi sa sasakyan, syempre, um, obviously, in sa interior tayo laging nakikipag-interact, di ba? So, um, importante na mas maging safe yung environment sa loob and dapat malinis. So, by using by using nano-agents, katulad ng gold, copper, silver, and etc., um, wala siyang side effect and at the same time, mas magiging healthy and mas magiging safe yung environment inside the automobile. Next, please. So, kanina, nakaka-discuss ko lang yung application of nanotechnology sa automobiles. Ngayon naman, i-discuss natin yung sa aerospace. So, yung aerospace kasi yun yung mga airplanes, mga aircrafts, and etc. Um, importante yung aerospace kasi ginagamit ito ng mga kumpanya sa pag-ship ng mga large amounts of goods 
And ginagamit din ito for traveling. So, mahalaga na high security ang aerospace and at the same time, perfected ang pagkakagawa nito. Dahil kahit maliit na defects na makaka-risk yan sa lives ng karamihan. So, sinasabi dito na ang pinaka-widely used na nanomaterials in aerospace include carbon nanotubes, nanoclay, graphene, at saka nanofibers. So, sinasabi din na yung carbon-based nanomaterials, ginagamit siya bilang fillers sa mga polymers para mas maging tough and stiff. So, um, to put it simply, mas maging matibay. So, ang magiging resulting nanocomposites niya is magiging strong and lightweight. Um, enhanced thermal, mechanical, and electrical properties. So, magagamit yung mga to sa, una, sa superior aircraft brake discs, sa self-healing composite, interactive, and strong windscreen. So, self-explanatory naman yan, pero yung letter A, to explain lang, yung superior aircraft brake disc, yun yung nakakabit sa gulong ng mga aircraft para, yun yung ginagamit para mag, kapag magla-landing na. Kasi, di ba, from... Um, from kinetic energy or moving energy, mag, magpapalit ito to heat energy because of the friction. So, ang ginagawa ng nanomaterial dito, I mean, ng nanotechnology dito, is madidissipate niya yung heat efficiency. So, not as intense yung mapoproduce niyang heat from the friction. Next naman is yung carbon nanotubes is electrically conductive. So, um... Ito, mas magiging safe din kasi yung aircraft, less exposed siya sa mga damage from electrical discharge. Next slide, please. Ayan, isa pa is yung high vibration damping. So, ang ibig sabihin lang yan ay mas madidissipate yung vibrations. Kasi, syempre, kapag nasa airplane ka, yung vibration magkukos siya ng discomfort sa mga passengers. And at the same time, yung mga vibration... Um, pwede yung makadamage din sa engines, lalo na yung mga sensitive components. So, kapag in mo siya ng nanotechnology, ang mangyayari is madidissipate yung vibration. Next naman is reduce surface degradation. Um, kapag nag-add ka ng nanoparticles, since yung mga aerospace ay exposed sa sunlight, sa moisture, sa oxygen, and etc. Kapag nag-apply ka ng nanoparticles, malalesen yung cracks, tapos mara-reduce yung UV degradation and increase. So, may increase yung lifespan niya or mas tatagal siya. Ngayon, yung um, engines naman ng aircraft is excellent heat resistant by addition of nanomaterials. And um, kapag nag-quote ka rin ng, um, kapag kinote mo yung engine components with nanofilms, magiging self-cleaning and mag-reduce din siya ng friction. And at the same time, ayun din yung kakasabi ko lang kanina yung common denominator ng goal ng nanotechnology sa mga vehicles ay lightweight and high strength yung mapoproduce nito. Next slide please. Okay, so kanina automobiles and yung aerospace. Ngayon naman proceed tayo sa marine transportation. Um, yung marine transportation, importante din yan kasi ginagamit din siya for traveling, for carrying weapons or cargo carrier and others. Ang pinaka main problem niya lang do is um lagi siyang babad sa tubig so that in itself can cause destruction. And at the same time, kapag sa seawater naman, ang mangyayari is um yung seawater kasi is high in salinity or 'di ba, parang tubig alat. So ang mangyayari is magkakaroon ng metal corrosion. So ngayon, kapag inapply natin ito ng nanotechnology, ang mangyayari is, or specifically using syromilling process, ayun din, high strength and lightweight siya. Tapos, um, meron din siyang ultraviolet blocking and antimicrobial properties. Tapos, ano rin siya, flame retardant and anti-corrosive behavior and explosion proof and electromagnetic shielding. Next slide, please. Ayan, lastly, um, hindi lang sa vehicles pwedeng ma-apply. Hindi lang sa vehicles pwedeng ma-apply yung nanotechnology, pero sa infrastructures din. Sa mga um, sa mga roads, sa sa, build, sa, sa roads, sa um, bridges, sa tunnels, and etc. Ngayon, um, kap, galing sa module, sinasabi dito na yung nano-engineering ng aluminum, steel, asphalt, concrete, and others ay pwedeng mag 
maging cause ng improvement para sa performance, resiliency, longevi- longevity ng highway at saka ng infrastructure. So, pati, um, nare-reduce din niya yung life cycle cost nito. Also, um, self-preparing ito and ability to, tra- to transmit energy. Tapos, cost-effective monitoring of the bridges, tunnels, rails, parking structures, and pavements over time. So, dito, gumagamit sila ng nanoscale sensors and devices. Um, kasi, to explain, yung nanoscale sc- sensors and devices, um, nilalagay yan sa, halimbawa, sa bridge, para madetect agad nila kung kahit may small na sira yung specific road or yung specific bridge na yun, para at least mas maagang maagapan. And, ayun, mas makakatipid kasi kapag maliit pa lang yung sira, maaga, maagapan agad. Maagapan siya agad. And also, related dito yung next, yung safety of drivers, yung nanoscale sensors, um, and also yung communication devices. Um, base kasi sa pagkakaintindi ko dito sa part na to, kapag meron ding nanotechnology applied sa mismong vehicle mo, parang kaya niyang ma- ma-communicate kapag lumalagpas ka na halimbawa sa mga lane. So, automatic, mag-automatic yung sasakyan na um, mag-move siya. So, ayun, pwede rin siya sa safety of drivers. Next slide, please. Ayan, ito naman para sa, specifically sa mga roads. Yung um, nanotechnology makes use of material properties at, at nanoscale. Tapos, yung small amount of nanomaterial na yun, kapag may next siya sa traditional road construction material, mag improve siya sa quality of roads. So, dahil dito, may improve din yung safety, economy, durability ng mga roads. And, ayun, may improve din yung solutions for better maintenance with user comfort. And, it will also make the road environment friendly. Next po. Ayun, thank you po. So, nakuha po namin yung references namin sa module and sa mga nalista kong references dyan. Thank you po. Okay, thank you po. Tapos na po ba yung uh, presentation ng uh, group 1 from 3 to? Okay, that's the last. So, yung mga representative natin, uh, Tanglao, Trinidad, sino pa ba yun? Dalas Reyes? Yung sinabi niya sa akin kanina. And, sino yung isa? Crespo po. Via Haar, jo- uh, Joshua. Sino yung isa? Apat lang po, ma'am. Apat lang. Ah, okay. So, ayun po. Okay. Uh, may question po muna. Coming from, ano, coming from the class. Uh, coming from 3-2 or 3-3. May mga question po ba from other groups? No, or may mga gustong i-clarify sa naging discussion po ng uh, group 1, both from 3-3 and 3-2. Ang tahimik. So mukhang wala po. Okay? Wala po ba? O, so siguro I'm assuming na ano, no, um, naintindihan naman po ng mabuti yung naging uh, discussion, naging report po ng, ano, ng uh, group 1 ng nanotech group uh, coming from uh, uh, 3 3 at saka sa uh, 3 2. Okay? So anyway, um, yung isa, sa nga, isa nga po sa topic natin under specific issues in SDS is about nanotechnology. So again, when we say nanotechnology, uh, it's about uh, the use, the, the manipulation of nanomaterials. Um, it also involves manufacturing nanoscale materials. It's structure source devices system involving also research and improvement ng iba't ibang uh, material. So discuss ni naman po yun ano in details. Emphasize naman po natin ano ano itong mga nano materials, ano ano po yung mga application and benefits of this um nano materials. Then uh yung three uh three three kanina ano they discuss about, syempre, the distinction uh, uh, between yung mga terms po natin, nanoscience, nanotech, nanomaterial, no, para gets po natin ano, how these two terms or uh, terms uh, or important terms are entirely different from each other. Then they've also discussed about the history, ano, meaning who are the significant people under uh, 
uh, nanotech you know from Feynman to uh, sino yung ano Taniguchi to Rohrer to Benig and all so and then um ano ba ba and then yung focus of discussion basically po ng nanotech group is about uh, some of the examples of nanomaterials and its benefits or application so kanina lagi kong nalilinig ano na making the product, making the material more durable, stronger, lighter, ano pa ba yun? safer, efficient, and even low cost. Which is true, di ba? Kung i, uh, uh, i susumahin po natin, ano, yung, um, yung benefit po ng, ng mga nanomaterials, yun lang naman yung gusto natin eh. Okay? So, you've discussed also about the microscope na ginagamit, ano, hopefully matandaan pa yun yung mga microscope daw po na ginagamit in um, um, viewing nanoscale particles uh, starting from uh, the, the typical electron microscope ano, which utilizes a particle beam of electrons to light up a certain specimen and be able to produce a well-defined image. So from a simple electron microscope tapos uh, yung naging atomic you uh, force microscope which basically gathers data or information from the surface of a certain material or nanomaterial hanggang nagkaroon nga po nung tinatawag na uh, scanning paneling microscope okay then um hindi ko na iisa-isahin pa yung mga diniskas po ng ano no ng uh, members of group 1 for uh, from 3 to and 3 2 kasi in emphasize naman nila in isa-isa na po yan um Doon lang sa ano, doon lang sa ating ano, uh, kasi aside from the benefits, um, how about the consequences? Ano po ba yung mga downside or possible risk po of nanotech? Can we identify? From 3 to, from 3 to po. And we identify, kasi medyo uh, ang haba po ng discussion natin, ano, ng mga benefits of nanotech, which is really good. Ano nakita po natin, ano yung mga benefits, ano yung mga uh, possible application, no? Not possible, talagang nang na ginagawa na po, no? Uh, or ginagamit na po natin. How about the downside po, no? Ano yung mga possible risk of, of nanotech? Meron ba? Um, from 3-3 po. Ah, from 3-3. Sige po. Sa Avedra, sige. Ay, ayan po. Uh, bali, yung nanoparticles, uh, tulad na nabanggit po kanina, is very small nga po. So, merong tendency na kaya siyang pumasok sa loob ng isang human body. So, for example, kapag pinag experimentan po yung silver or gold, it is very dangerous po sa atin since uh, nakakasira po ito ng lungs, lalo na kapag na-inhale siya ng isang tao. Ah, uh, Aside from that, uh, isang consequence din po is yung um, pag naturally occurring po yung elements and molecules tulad na po nung uh, pag pinag-aaralan yung mga bacterial, such like that is nagiging harmful din siya sa skin nating mga humans, lalo na sa mga exposed sa um, sa mga machines na yun and sa mga sample. Okay, sige po. Uh, meron pa, may, may nakita ko kanina na isa pa. Ah, uh, na nag-open ang mic. Sino po ba 'yon? Oh, po ma'am. So similar ah. yung sa ano po, nanopdan yung maliit yung nano particles na uh, it can wind up in the limb, blood, even bone marrow. Tapos sa mga experiments po sa mga hayop, minsan nagko ng brain damage sa mga aso, sa mga rats, rabbit yun po. Okay. So tama po ano yung binabanggit natin specifically ang really binabanggit po natin is yung possible risk niya po sa ano in the body of uh, living things or organisms. Nasabi ni Miss Abeda kanina it could affect our ano yun, lungs, yung respiratory uh, system natin or organs po natin. So basically in the body dahil sa sobrang diit nga po nitong mga nanoparticles na to, it may post risk in altering uh, our body, our body cell, since nanoscale materials has the ability to cross the cell membrane and to translocate in our body. Tapos, um, 
There are also some concerns with using nanotech, like the, the possibility of uh, toxicity, high reactivity, and toxicity. May nagbanggit kanina nun eh, na it could also be pervasive. Um, and using it may also introduce uh, a new, a better efficiencies, which will make the natural resources, which will make our current practices ano, uncompetitive or obsolete dahil nga dito sa nanotech na to. And uh, since ang nanotech po or nanomaterials ay even sa mga personal care products, ano, ang dami-dami mga lipstick or for women, uh, mga cosmetic products po natin, there is no, uh, I don't know if you're I don't know, aware, but there is no FDA approval needed for this cosmetic. So, ibig sabihin, kung walang FDA approval na kailangan, there will be no checking, there will be no regulating. So, just in case magkaroon ng problem dun sa mga cosmetic products na yun, eh, wala tayong, ano, wala tayong masisisi, wala tayong mapupuntahan. So, those are some of the downside, you know, and or consequences or ano ba, possible na, na risk of uh, using these nanomaterials. Pero po, lagi natin iisipin na the use of these nanomaterials should ensure that it will outweigh you know, the dangers involved with its development from safety, health, and pollution. So nanotech needs to be continuously explored you know, with safety, again, to improve our quality of life. So, uh, isa pa ng, isang tanong lang, okay? How about the nanotech in the Philippines? May nag-research po ba sa atin na what's the status of nanotech in the Philippines? Do we have government funding? Uh, meron na po ba talaga mga nanomaterials na ginagamit in the Philippines? Uh, ano po ba? Anyone? Uh, basically po, ma'am, yung DOST po yung currently na nagre-research and nagpa-fund sa mga um, researches and experiments about nanotech po. Okay, so tama naman po yun. In the Philippines, you know, uh, uh, DOST, Philippine Council for Advanced ano ba yun? Science and Technology Research and Development. Check nyo na lang kung tama po yung binanggit ko. Pero basically nga po, the UST, okay, has um, identified, you know, different uh, sectors na kumbaga ito yung magiging ano nila, priority nila. Okay, merong nanotech roadmap for the Philippines na tinatawag. And that includes uh, ICT or IT and uh, semiconductors. Ano ba ba? Yung energy, since importante, importante po yan, our environment, food and agriculture. Okay, although meron na po tayo mga existing, like for instance, yung nanosilica based fertilizer natin, meron na to increase um, the production, the germination of plants. You know? So, meron din mga ginagamit na for water purification, ano pa, food packaging, environmental sensors. Meron naman ng mga existing sa atin. So, pero nga, those are some of the, yung mga gusto pang i-prioritize ano, na, nitong grupo na to, yung DOST na to. For, tinawag nila yun na nanotech roadmap for the Philippines. So, um, again, ICT and semiconductors, health Pa, energy, environment, food and agriculture. Ayun. So, those are some of the uh, sectors na gusto po nilang bigyan ng uh, and may ano na, ano, uh, in-increase na rin po yung government funding kasi nakita na rin yung kung gaano, ay, medicine environment. So, nakita na rin nila kung gaano kalaki yung ano, no, yung um, um, ano tawag dito? yung maaaring maging benefit natin from nanotech. So, uh, nag-increase na rin yung government funding. At ang dami ng, ano eh, ang dami na pong, um, ano tawag dyan, yung application for patent ng Pilipinas. Uh, since around 2000 pa, no, meron ng mga, ano na, meron ng mga application for patent ng mga ginagawa natin. But the problem is, uh, I don't know, if, and, parang wala pa atang na po-provide or nabibigay talaga na na uh, patent para sa Pilipinas. So kasi may app may ano pa rin, may application ng ganun eh. So um so search na lang pero ang alam pero ang alam ko ay wala pa until this year, ano, 
na naibibigay na patent. So, anyway, so yun yung winwork po ng, ano, ng DOST. Again, DOST, Philippine Council for Advanced uh, Science and Technology Research and Development. Okay? So, ayun. So, you might, basically, yun lang po yung ano natin, yung discussion natin on uh, nanotech. Yung huling topic natin po under specific issues in STS is about global pandemic. Okay? Sige. So, we're done with this topic. Okay, may question to po ba from uh, both 3.3 and 3.2? So, by next meeting naman po, ano, uh, yung uh, huling topic natin. Okay, question? No more? Okay, sige po. Sige po. Um, wala po sa attendance po. Gusti, Gutierrez.